central focus that we want to arrest our heart and bridle our attention and that thought very simply is don't stop praying. We've been looking at the book of Nehemiah as an encouragement and as a base passage of study to grab some, some themes and thoughts that will help us to grow in our relationship with honoring God, understanding the essential nature of prayer, but then also in this case grabbing some thoughts out that can help to, to help us to, to have a more practical and powerful life in whatever facet that we, that we have. We talked the last time about being a people who set goals and accomplish those goals. And I wanna challenge you to take it even further, not only to look at your walk with God, but in anything that you're doing, any pursuit that you have, educationally, occupationally, some of your own personal goals. We said on the last installment that we do really well at setting goals and talking about what we wanna do, but our effort ought to be in how we go about accomplishing those, those goals. And this chapter is one that allows us to see not only that God can lay something on your heart, but then what it takes for you and I to go get it. Nehemiah reminds us of the power of prayer woven into the tapestry of your everyday actions and the plans and the strategies that ought to be done to accomplish the things that God has laid on your heart and that you want to get done for the kingdom of God. He reminds us that prayer focuses us. And when you and I can be focused by the power of prayer, there's not much that we cannot accomplish because God's hand is on our life. And we'll see that as we study this text. I want to read just a little bit of the passage. I'm in Nehemiah chapter 6. I want to read a few verses. Really, I want to read the first 14 verses, 15 verses or so, and then we'll offer uh, a little bit of encouragement and some application. When the word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono, but they, are, they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying out a great project and I cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go with you? Four times they sent me the same message and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time Sanballat sent his aid to me with the same message in his hand and was unsealed in, in which was written. It is reported among the nations in Geshem saying, it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt and therefore you are rebuilding the wall. Moreover, again, according to the reports, you are about to become the king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us confer together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up in, out of your own head. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and the son of Mehatebel, um, uh, who was shut up in his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple. Let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you by night. Uh, kill you by night. They are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, oh my God. 
because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th day of El Elo in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all, all the surrounding nations were afraid and they lost self-confidence because they were because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Nehemiah's text is a reminder in the sixth chapter. It's a reminder of the power of God to move through an individual to accomplish whatever it is his heart is set about accomplishing. And yet there are some powerful reminders in the text that we can walk away with practical thoughts that help us to remember what it's what how, how critical it is to focus and to be driven by the notion of prayer. We ought not ever stop praying. In fact, don't stop praying because you remember that prayer focuses your efforts to honor God in your work, to honor God in your life ambitions, and to honor God in the stewardship of your service. Let me encourage you again, in you, you thinking about and looking at the principles that Nehemiah gives you, prayer drives you, but it also ought to be a reminder of what God can do when you and I focus our work focus our ambitions, and focus the stewardship of our service towards God. It's a reminder that it will help us to remain focused in at least three ways. We've talked about one of them. The first way we talked about is that prayer focuses your honorable intention to put time in on the task. Remember in this in this. In this passage that they did what was what normally took a long time in 52 days why because they focus in on time on the principle of time in on the task meaning that they did not allow their work to be eclipsed by a divided attention why because a divided attention will diminish the quality of what you do they did not allow their work or the integrity of their work to be diminished by, by being scattered or not following through with what they said they would do. When they said they're putting time in on the task, remember that's exactly what they did. We talked about this last time. Many people are at work for eight hours, but they're not working for the eight hours that they're at work. Don't allow your attention to be divided. Don't allow yourself to be one who is outside of or don't you don't have the integrity to do what you said you would do. Nehemiah prayed and God's people had a mind to work. And the time in on the task not only is essential, but what helps you to put time in on the task, doing what you said you would do and actually doing the work that it takes to get it done is the is the fact that it is enhanced by effort. That's number 2. Effort is essential to your life work, life's work. Over and throughout this text and all the way from chapter one and now, we find over and over again that the idea of effort is connected to working for God. And when you think about doing anything, not only for your own ambition, when you have dreams and you have goals and you have ideas that you wanna accomplish, it takes effort. When you talk about doing something for yourself, when you talk about setting goals, health goals, uh, 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 educational goals, occupational goals, it takes effort. There's nothing you can do without effort. And here in this passage, when they're describing building the wall, they did not build the wall passively. They didn't build the wall by sitting back and letting it happen by osmosis. That's not what's going to happen. Not, not what's going to happen. It took effort. In fact, the 52 days, the time they put in on the task, all 52 days was a matter of them pouring effort in on the job. What do you mean by effort? Let me tell you what I don't mean. By effort, I don't mean laying back and letting life happen to you. I don't mean waking up way beyond the alarm clock. I don't mean not doing what, what you need to get done in the occasion you need to get done. I don't mean creating excuses after excuses as to why you couldn't do what it takes for you to get done. Effort is a driving force that motivates you and what you find is that Nehemiah would go to God in prayer and he would echo that God strengthened my hands to get this thing done. Go back and read the text. Effort, definition, let me give it to you. Effort by definition means the exertion of physical or mental power or energy. You cannot claim to put in effort if you're not putting in energy, putting in power, putting in strain, physical or mental. It is the earnest and strenuous attempt to accomplish a thing. It is something done by hard work. 
It is something done. It is an achievement or an expression or a or an effort done through through uh, uh, um, through grinding and through doing what you need to do to accomplish what 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 the goal is. Effort is something that every last one of us have to exert if we really want to accomplish anything. Again, effort is essential to your life. When you look at the notion of effort, there are at least three things I want you to grab out of it in this text. You see effort given to these people. You see effort moving through the, 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 the people of God in this text. Number one, effort involves the mental engagement in whatever project that you have. If you're really going to do what you're called to do, if you're really going to be a people who say that I've done what God would have me to do, you've got to put in effort. And effort involves the mental engagement. That's why you can't stop praying. Don't stop praying because over and again, you find that they were mentally engaged in what God called them to do. In the Bible, the text says that the people, you read phrases over and over again, that they said, let us rise up and rebuild. They wanted to be engaged. In the text, that's chapter 2, verse 18. In chapter 4 and verse number 6, the Bible says that they worked with all their heart and effort. In chapter 5 and verse number 16, they were devoted to the work, effort. In chapter 6, the text that we read earlier, when they, when they sent the threats to Nehemiah, Nehemiah responded and said, I cannot come down. I'm involved in a work right now. Effort, chapter 6 and verse number 3. So the, the, the notion here, when you're putting in effort, it is a mental engagement. You and I have to have a mind to do the work. Let me challenge you. The next time you talk about the goal that you have, the next time you put a project up that I want to accomplish this, I want to do this, this is my dream, I want this occupation, I want this, I want this accomplishment, I want this weight loss goal, I want this prayer life. I want to read this many chapters of the Bible. I want to serve this amount of people. I want to get this project going. What mental effort are you already setting up in your mind that you're going to get done? You've got to have a mind to work. That's why you can't stop praying. Go to God and help him to reorient your mind so that you will rise up to build whatever it is you see so that you will work with all your heart so that you will be devoted to the work that's at hand so that you realize that once you start doing it, you cannot come down because you're at effort. You're putting in the effort to get done what God would have you do to do. It is a mental engagement. But then number two, underneath the effort, it is a movement through the challenges. I told you at chapter six that, that Nehemiah is moving through the text. But look again with me, because when you look, when you look again at the, at the chapter, chapter six, verse number three, uh, you find that they sent messengers and those messengers came to him and they were trying to get him to come off the task. And he reminded them, he said, I'm carrying on a great project or I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down four times. Verse number four, chapter six, verse number four, four times they came to me with the same message. And each time I came, uh, I responded to them. What are they coming to him doing? There are three things. We don't have time to go and read it, but you go back and read chapter six slowly, verses six. Uh, verse 3 all the way through verse number 9. And three different things you find when it comes to you having effort to accomplish what God would have you to do. You've got to learn how to have mental engagement, how to exert physical and mental power or energy through challenges. You've got to learn how to have earnest and strenuous effort through the challenges. Sometimes our problem is that we quit building the wall, whatever it may be in your life, you quit doing whatever it is that God would have you to do because you, you realize that it's going to come with some strain. It might hurt. It might, it might challenge you. You might have to get up early. You like sleeping late. You might have to put in time and you want to go to, go to bed. You might have to give up some of your niceties. You might have to let go of things that you really crave or that you are addicted to. And you cannot, you don't want to go through the pain of change. So you get beat by the challenge instead of responding to the challenge. Nehemiah reminds us that part of what happens is that you have schemes that lie to you. Watch some of the lies that even our own mind tells us, you can't do this. You shouldn't do this. There's no reason for you to do this. You might as well stop right now. Ain't no need for you to do all that. You suppose, look, 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 look. Ain't nobody supposed to put themselves through this kind of trouble. You need, go on and have your sugar. Go on and do what you want to do. Go on and sleep a little later. Go on and give it up here. You don't have to do it. Why read that book? Why talk to that person? Why do, whatever it is, the lies start coming in your mind. Nehemiah's dealing with lies. 
And so he responds to the lie. He responds to the falsity and says, I've got a good work going on here. you got to see your goal, see your ambition as being a good work and be willing to put the effort in. And when you're putting the effort in, you not only will realize it takes mental engagement, but I've got to move through the challenges that present themselves to me. Move through them in such a way where I'm going to respond to the lie and say, I cannot come down. But then watch, there's a second thing. You've got to learn how to respond to fatigue. Later on in the text, they were growing tired of dealing with the stuff that was going on. I love this because here you find Nehemiah gave it to God. Verse number nine, they were all trying to frighten us. That's the first one. Thinking that our hands will get too weak for the work. The second challenge that you your effort has to move through is not only the lies, the falsities, but many times your effort in doing what whatever your goal might be will meet up with the challenge of being fatigued. Can I let you in? Look, look, there's one thing that can mess with your head like nothing else, and it's being tired. But when you know, when you know that the goal of what you have is more important than what it is in your mind trying to play you or your body trying to play you or your heart trying to play you or your energy trying to play you. And I get it. There are all kinds of things that make you tired. You get tired of being nice to people that are mean to you. You get tired of waking up serving folk that don't want to respond to you. You get tired of having to clock out, clock in at 345 in the morning, clock out at 11 o'clock at night. You get you get tired of the goals that you have that are not happening right now. You get tired of working through challenge after challenge after challenge. You get tired of opposition after opposition. You get tired. But here's the thing. When you get tired, don't stop praying. In the text, he reminds us that they kept threatening us. They hoped that we would back off. They, they hoped that we would let up. But I prayed. Look at the end of the text. I prayed and he turned it over to God and said, now strengthen my Hands, you and I have to learn the prayer will focus your ability to put in effort and effort is essential to your life. It's essential and you see it in your mental engagement. It's essential and it moves you through challenges. But I got to give you one more about effort. Effort will help you to meet the moment of of the moment as an occasion to be useful to God and to be beneficial to others. Nehemiah was saying ultimately at verse number three and in verse number nine that he's, that he's doing a work for something greater than himself. Listen, whatever you got going on and whatever challenges you have in your life, you got to learn the part of what messes or part of what blesses you to move through and meet them with the effort it demands is that you're living and accomplishing something greater than yourself. Let me challenge you now about your goals. Perhaps one of the reasons why you keep tapping out on what your goals and your plans and your dreams and your ambitions are. Part of the reason why you're not following through with your service and your ministry and your effort to be a blessing. Part of the reason why you're not consistent on your job or with people that you're connected to or even in your own prayer life and your Bible reading is that you're still right now myopic. It's all about you. It's all about you doing what you're doing for you. Nehemiah through the book. Go back and read it. Through the book he would ask God, God remember what I'm doing for these people and for you. Remember what I'm doing for them and for, and for everyone else. Nehemiah knew how to bring his goal of rebuilding the wall and the effort it took to build that wall and make it bigger than just himself. It was for the people. It was for the world. Remember, Jerusalem was for the, the nation of Israel, but Jerusalem was the centerpiece of God's presence for the world. Whatever you're doing, whether it be a health goal, whether it be an educational goal, whether it be an occupational goal, whether it be a familial goal, whether it be a social goal, you got to make it beyond you. If it's bigger than you, then you're not just putting in work for you. You wake up for you and you wake up for everybody else. When you clock in in the morning, you are exerting physical and mental power and energy, not just for you. You are exerting physical and mental power for somebody else. I'm working for the kingdom. I'm working for the church. I'm working for somebody I haven't even met yet. Somebody who's downcast. Someone who's crying right now. Someone who's frustrated. Someone who's holding their head down. My encouragement is that I want to help someone who's, who's saying, you know what? I've been lazy. I haven't been doing what I need to do. I know I'm making excuses. I know I keep tapping out. 
I know I've been sidetracked. I know right now I'm sitting back, still in my pants, uh, st uh, still in my shorts, haven't even woke up for the day. And it's the end of the day. I'm doing all of this, and I know I'm not putting in the effort, and I'm changing because of the encouragement. Look, you got to live beyond yourself. And when you live beyond yourself, the effort you put in matches the occasion and it matches the moment and it meets the moment as being useful to God and useful and beneficial to someone else. Pour yourself out. Be used up doing good. And then let God call you home when he's done. And when you can do that, when your effort meets up, with your time in on the task, watch how they come together. Not only do you wake up and every day of your life when you go to work and they tell you you've got work for eight hours, but you're putting time in on the task and you're pouring effort into it in such a way that you know I am mentally engaged in this work. I am exerting mental power, physical power, I am earnestly and strenuously attempting to get this work done. I am achieving, I'm expending myself for the particular need. I'm going to move through the challenges of the days. I'm going to deal with falsities. I'm going to deal with fatigue. I'm going to deal with whatever might try to frighten me off my path. And whatever it may be, I'm going to move through the challenge. Keep on pouring in effort. Why? Because I'm not only going to move through the challenge, I'm going to meet the moment as an occasion to be useful to my God, to be useful to someone else, to be a blessing for some folk that I don't even know yet. I know, though, that everything I'm doing is essential to this life that I'm living. And so when God uses me, I'm going to be a difference that makes the difference. You cannot stop praying. Don't stop praying. Let me tell you why. Because your time in on the task is supported. It is enhanced by your effort, which is essential to life. Can we pray together right now? Father, we love you. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you for being our God. We thank you so much for the privilege you've given us in being able to be a people who work and accomplish our dreams and our goals by the, by the abilities that you've given us. God, we thank you for the reminder that we have in this passage, the reminder in this text of what it takes to be those who not only set goals, but to go get those goals and accomplish them. Thank you for Nehemiah's example. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of being able to have opportunities to serve and work and live for you. Thank you, Father, for the motivation that you've given us in this passage, not only to realize how, how critical it is to remain focused and not have a divided attention, to actually pour time in on the task that you set before us, Father, but to undergird that through deliberate and, and intentional effort. Help us, Father, to realize the mental uh, it, the mental energy that comes with pouring in effort. Help us, Lord God, to move through the challenges of fear and fatigue and, and even, Lord God, the, the falsities of life that try to stop us from pouring in the extra, extra effort and pouring in the energies. And Lord God, we thank you for blessing us to know that our efforts move beyond, that they meet they meet the horizon of the world and, and, they, and they are more than just for us, but they're for people that we haven't even met. Help us to realize that our entire life is a stewardship effort of pouring ourselves and sowing into the moment so that we can reap a horizon that we may not even see. But Lord God, we thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father, for this occasion to be reminded of how essential prayer is. Help us to have a spirit where we never will give up on praying. We never will stop talking to you and pouring ourselves out to you. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify your name because you are absolutely essential to us and we're absolutely devoted to you. We thank you for all of what you do. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray. Amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying because you remember that as you give yourself to whatever it is, your goal, your ambition, your service and your stewardship is that that prayer will focus your effort to honor God in your work, to honor God in your life ambitions, to honor God in the stewardship of your service to him as you put time in on the task and as you know that effort is essential to life itself. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please. Pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you.
yes we do. Yes we do. And we praise you. And every Lord's day, we take a little time to remember you, Jesus. For your suffering, for your suffering, for the way that you hurt, you bled, for the pain that you endured on Calvary's cross. If I had one plea, if I had one plea, it would be Jesus keeping me near the cross, near the cross.